somebody turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he's able. Tell somebody else, he's able. Y'all ready? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask for. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. We're going to start our devotion. Come to order, please. Would the church come to order? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Deacon Terry Johnson. I will be opening up the church this morning by saying welcome, welcome, and welcome. God is good all the time. He's always with us no matter what we're going through in life. I want to sing this song for my first time trying this, so be with me. God be with me, please. Amen. There's a lily in the valley, bright as a morning star. There's a lily in the valley, bright as a morning star. There is a lily in the valley. Bright as a morning star, lead amen, amen, amen. There is joy in the valley, bright as a morning star. There is joy in the valley, bright as a morning star. There is joy in the valley, bright as a morning star. Amen, amen, amen. There is peace in the jolly valley, bright as a morning star. There is peace in the valley. Bright as a morning star, there is peace in the valley. Bright as a morning star, amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. There is Jesus in the valley, bright as a morning star. There is Jesus in the valley, bright as a morning star. There is Jesus in the valley, bright as a morning star. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, church, once again. I 
see God is still in the blessing yeah. business. Yeah. I see all y'all beautiful, wonderful faces, and we're oh, glad yeah. to have you with us. Uh, I'm coming from two scriptures this morning. Uh, give me just a moment here. You know, for lack of a better word, the word suffering can mean a lot to different people. You can be suffering in different ways. Well, I'm suffering right now, and the scriptures that I'm going to read is what helps me. And I thought maybe I could share it with you guys, and maybe if, if there's somebody out there who feels as if they're suffering, and sometimes we suffer in silence, that it may help you. So I'm coming from Jeremiah 29 to start with. Because they are telling you lies in my name, I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you future and hope. And I want to come from Proverbs uh, 3, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord. All with, excuse me, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen? Amen. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus make me whole. This is Communion Sunday as we partake of the Lord's Supper. The bread represents the brokenness of Jesus. The wine represents the blood that he shed on Calvary. But when Jesus was crucified, he bled from seven parts of his body, all giving cleansing power to the born again believer. As we go into our meditation of him, I ask that you all would journey in with me as we sing an old familiar song. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. You see, it soothes my doubts, and it calms my fears, and it dries all of my tears. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never is power you see it reaches to the highest mountain 
mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. Amazing grace, how sweet does sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, precious and holy Father, we thank you for this day, for the day that we will never see again. We come with an attitude of gratitude. For uh, we didn't have to get up this morning. The Lord might not have gotten us up. As Deacon Barner said, I bet could have been a cooling board. But it's your grace, your amazing grace, that woke us up this morning. The Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our pastor and his family. The Heavenly Father, make sure that this church keep his arms raised as he fight against the wiles of the word and preaching the word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless all of the ministerial staff and their families and all of the auxiliaries, the deaconesses, the deacons, and all of our uh, services in this church. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask these things because we know that you are God. And we need you in times such as these. When we see death and destruction, even over in the Middle East, the Heavenly Father, we see death and destruction all of, among us, the Heavenly Father. We see shootings and, and, and killings of all kinds, the Heavenly Father. And we see people that just have lost their ways. But amazing grace, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. It's your amazing grace that keeps us, the Heavenly Father, and maintain us, this Heavenly Father, against all of the destructions of the world, the Heavenly Father. It's your amazing grace. And we see it all around us, the Heavenly Father, where you bless us in the time of need at the 99th hour, the Heavenly Father. Your amazing grace is what maintains us when we are hopeless, and you give us hope. It's your amazing grace that we see. Even in the homeless person that was going to the dumpster this morning. We see it in his eyes. Your amazing grace. Those that are, have cancer. We see it in your eyes. Heaven, Father. Your amazing grace. It is your amazing grace that keep us going. It's the amazing grace that will keep us going on. As we fight against these things of the world, Lord, that can test our faith. Dear Heavenly Father, your amazing grace. And we just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all that you do, the Heavenly Father, that keeps us going, the Heavenly Father. Even when we don't love ourselves, you even love us more, the Heavenly Father. It's your amazing grace. And we continue, the Heavenly Father, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. This is my prayer, and I pray it in faith in your name, Son Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Truly, thank him for his amazing grace. Thank for allowing us to get up this morning one more again. Closing our right mind. Didn't have to do it, but he did. 
Yes, sir. Uh, we just thank you for a many blessings. Uh, many times I think about how, how much we all are blessed. I think about my brother that had a stroke, lost the use of his left side, his left arm. He still can praise God. He got one good arm still to raise. Some of us got two arms and won't raise one. We thank God for his amazing grace and his many blessings. We're going to continue to praise him this morning. We all help us with this song. Let it be real. Let it be real. Let it be real. Every thing that you do for the Lord. It, come on and let it be real. No order, let it be real. Let it be real. Every praise and your worship be real for all that he has done for all that he is doing we ought to be real in our worship we've come to worship him this morning they that worship him must worship him in what spirit and in truth and the truth is God is an awesome God God has been so good. He's so amazing. And we just thank him today for all that he has done. But not in just so much what he's done, 
but for who he is. Who he is. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And we thank him this morning. For those of you in Cyberland, you have just tuned in to the First Iconium Baptist Church, where we are located at 542 Moreland Avenue in the great city of Atlanta. We are pastored by none other than Atlanta's civil rights pastor, Pastor Timothy McDonald III. Our first lady is Sister Shirley McDonald. This is the servant church where new life begins and love never ends. And right now we want to stand and we want you to know but we also want the Lord to know that he's good. Is he good? Oh, y'all don't sound like it. Is he good? Has he made a way for you? Has he opened doors for you? Has he closed doors that he, that, that he only he could close? We thank him today. And let us lift our voices let us lift our hands in praise to let him know the choir shall lead us.
church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let's raise the roof. Let's blow the roof off. Say amen. Yes. As we further our worship service, our scripture reading by the Reverend Corey Diamond, Psalms 21 through 9, and our opening prayer by the Reverend Eugene Davenport. Amen. 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 Psalms 20, 1 through 9, verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee out from sanctuary and strengthen thee out of time. Remember all the offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Salah. Grant thee according to thy own heart, and fulfill all thy counsels. We will rejoice in thy salvation, in all the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now, Lord. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. All together, say, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Amen. Good morning, Prince of Coney. Lord, as we gather here today, we just want to give you praise, honor, and glory for who you are and what you are in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to come out to your house one more time. And Lord, we ask that your spirit rest, rule, and abide in this place from the poor pit all the way back to the back door. That your Holy Spirit reign, Father God, that Somebody may be set free. Somebody may be delivered. Somebody need to hear good news about how you died for our sins on Calvary. And Father God, be with the man that's going to bring the word. Take him down to the storehouse, Father God. Raise him up, Father God. Bless him to preach your word with conviction and holy power. And we will ever give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.
many of you know he rose? How, how many of you know he rose? Do you know when they went to the grave, it was empty. And, and, and he died, but then he rose again. And aren't you glad? I, I, aren't you glad? I, I don't, don't fool me now. I, I, don't, I, I don't hear you. Aren't you glad that he rose early Sunday morning? He got up. a week removed from Resurrection Sunday, but do you know he rose? I want to see you stand, raise your hands. I want to see you stand on your feet. This is a time for celebration. This ain't no time to be sitting down. You ought to be on your feet. And if you say nothing else, you ought to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because he got up that morning. And because he got up. Yeah. This ain't no dead church. We, 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 this ain't no dead church now. We not in the, the Episcopal or Lutheran church. Come on now. All right, we have two, two announcements. One, the pastor, pastoral anniversary committee, but then Shawanda Butts, Deaconess Shawanda Butts, has, a, has a, an announcement. very brief, but I just had to um, do this. Um, my grandmother always told me, use your resources, use what you got. Right. And so we had a, a deaconess training yesterday uh, and luncheon. Um, we were here until about 2.30, almost 3 o'clock. And when I tell you all, it was absolutely amazing. Um, it was just amazing. Right. And so I just had to do something for a few people um, that helped us out. And so I wanted to present them something and uh, just let them know how much it meant to me um, as the new Deaconess president that they came out and helped us. So if uh, Nadia Murray is here, Miss Bobby and Miss Jackie and Rodney Mitchell, I don't know if they're all here today, but if you are here, please come up to the front. For our cooks, we had a hot prepared lunch yesterday that was absolutely amazing. I had to go home and lay down and take a nap after we, we left here. And I just want to thank them so much um, for everything they did for us yesterday. And I went back and told um, Miss Jackie and Miss Bobby and Miss Carrie was back there too. Anytime that Shannon's cook, fix me a plate. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Thank you. So much. Rodney was the fish fryer. We had hot fish. It was amazing. It was just amazing. Thank y'all so much. Amen. And then 
Um, we had our elections back in November. Um, so when I knew I was going to be the incoming president, um, just real quick, I have only been a, a deaconess since 2018. Uh, in 2020, we had COVID. So I really, I only got like a full year of being a deaconess before the church closed down for two and a half years. So there is so much that I still don't know, so much that I'm still yet learning. And like I said, my grandma always said, use what you got, just use what you got. And so when I got voted in as the president in November, I immediately sought out some ladies um, to be like my advisory council. And I, I called them, we had meetings, we've talked on the phone, we've had conferences. And um, the first person I wanna call up here is um, she has always been somebody that has supported me before I became a deaconess or anything like that. Um, she will correct me. She will tell me if I, you dress too tight, you dress too short, you, whatever it is, she will tell me. And I appreciate that because again, I am still learning how to not just you know be a deaconess and now trying to learn how to be the president of the deaconess, but her, her support has just been invaluable to me. And she gave us such a powerful training on this communion table yesterday um, about what we're supposed to do, how it's supposed to look, the things that are supposed to be on the table. And so I want Deaconess Alice Watson to please come up here. She was our outgoing president. She gonna get me for this. And then my um, Miss Alice was the outgoing president, and um, she could have still been a president, but she was like, "I'm tired. Y'all need some, you know, young blood." And so she has. She will call me and, and make sure I know that okay, if we, you know, we need to dress out for this funeral because it was a deacon or it was a mother, you know, just things that I need to know. I'm still learning this position. But then I had um, this council, and I went to somebody that I respect so much, and um, she's another one that will get me. She will address me, and I, I love it. I love it. I want to be corrected because I want to do stuff decent and in order. But I went to this person because I know she knew what she's talking about and said, will you be in charge of getting a committee together? We had so many new ladies coming in um, to be trained, and again, like me, Monica, and um, Cheryl, we came in in 2018, and we only got to be a deaconess for a year before everything shut down, so we were still learning too. I went to Miss Carrie, and I said, will you be over a training for us? I'm gonna give you three months to put it together, and when I tell y'all they knocked it out the park yesterday, yes. amazing. So I'm gonna ask them to come up here and stand up here with me. Miss Carrie, Miss Gloria, Miss Nancy, Miss Jean, and I'm missing one. Miss Joyce, Joyce Charles. Come up, y'all come up. Amen. Please. Yeah, somebody need to be getting that she go, Sean. Getting that picture right there, y'all. Miss Charlotte, come. I want you all to see all this wisdom that is surrounding me. I thank you all so much. They, they, Miss Nancy, come back. Miss Nancy, Nancy, I ain't seen shit on yet. <laughs> come on back. She hates taking pictures and stuff. Come on back. Miss Nancy gave us a word about communion, explain the seriousness of it, explain what is really going on at this table, what it represents. She did this for us when we first came in in 2018, and a lot of the stuff that I would do on first Sunday, I don't do it no more. I don't do it once I got a real understanding of what it really means mm. and the sacrifice that was made. Miss Gloria was our song leader. She led us in all our songs. She had like trivia for us. They prepared for this so much. Jean was our 
fashion show. We had a fashion show of do's and don'ts and what we should have on and what we should not have on. As Deaconess and, and Jean pointed out, I was the one that was dressed wrong and she pointed out every single thing I had on wrong, which was intentional for us to see what you're supposed to look like versus what you shouldn't look like. Miss Joyce laid out step by step a document on preparing the candidates for baptism. Mm. On the Sundays we have baptism. All right. And went through it line by line. We were able to ask questions. There were things that a lot of us did not know that we were able to ask and get clarification on. And like I said, Miss Carrie was the one that pulled all of this together, everything together. And I just wanted to thank y'all. So I just went home full spiritually and physically because I ate two plates yesterday. <laughs> But I just wanted to thank you all openly in front of the church and just let you all see that um, age, with age comes wisdom. And like my grandmama always said, you got to use what you got. This is wisdom up here around me. I would be a fool not to take advantage of it. So I just wanted to thank you all so much. You can be seated. You know, even before Reverend Yates comes back up, I feel good that I, I did not have to ask you all to stand and, and applaud. It was natural. You see what we have. Shawanda just texted me and Reverend Yates this morning and said, I got to do something. You know, I, I want to be obedient and can I have your permission to do that? I had no idea what she was going to do. There's some people that God puts in your midst that you just trust them. You, you trust their heart. You trust their spirit. This was beautiful. On, on a lot of levels, this was beautiful. And Shawanda and all the ladies, you know, we men know, we, we talk a lot of trash. Amen. But we ain't nothing without y'all. Right. Now, now that's just a fact. Thank you for all that you do, and, and I want to say finally that there are hundreds of people who watch this via Facebook and YouTube. Believe me when I tell you that a lot of other pastors, especially pastors, deaconess, deacons, who watch our broadcast, because they tell me they watch it. What you just did, Shawanda, is going to help some other churches. Some other deacon boards, some other deaconess boards. What you all just did, the information that you just shared. I always say, you don't know who's watching, and you don't know who's listening. So make sure you always do the right thing and say the right thing. Because God always got somebody else who may not know Jesus who's watching you. That's why I carry myself in such a way that when people look at me, they'll look beyond me and see the Jesus who I represent. I just wanted to take this pastoral prerogative to say thank you. We're getting ready for, and Sister Goosby called me the other day, for our 40th pastoral, and I don't take that lightly either, y'all. There are not many pastors out here today who could say I've been at a church for 40 years. So we're going to have them to come forward. Uh, Tony, hey, it's Gray, Deacon Graves, and his wife, beautiful wife, Carol. All right, now, this may be the third time y'all ladies done had some, and the brothers wasn't invited. We're we going to crash the next one if I hear anything else about how good that food was. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Let the church say amen one more time. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Murray, for that opening. Our theme is service is my calling, church is my mission. I'm here on behalf of the pastoral aid committee. I'd like to have all those proud members to please stand for a second. 
if you would, please. A few of you guys are here. There they are. Today, I want to announce some of our activities. Uh, first, I want to tell you about uh, May 14th through May 16th, we're going to have a revival. And on those two days, we're going to have Reverend Gerald Elligan from True Light Baptist Church. The first night, the second night will be A. Anthony Motley from Lindsay Street Baptist Church. Then on Sunday, we're going to have Elder Henry, who is from the Church of God Christ in Macon, I believe. I didn't get the name of his church, but he'll be bringing the message on that Sunday. Now, as I begin to give you all this information, I had a thought the other night. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube, but I watched a service, uh, a service that was held here on Friday. And I was so moved by it because I thought about our pastor's anointing and his commitment. Because it sent me back to years and years ago. I was at a funeral at uh, Ben Hill United Methodist Church. Um, Andy Young was there. Maynard Jackson was there. Um, um, Marvin Arrington was there. A whole lot of dignitaries. But Reverend McDonald did the eulogy that day. And this must have been 20 years ago for Bryce Smith. And I'm telling you, that's my first time hearing him do a eulogy of what I call a dignitary, a friend of his, and I know he's done many, many more. But to show the contrast, the other night, uh, led by um, Reverend Rawls and Miss Rawls, they'd done a funeral for somebody that wasn't necessarily uh, involved in church, but the church was open for them. And uh, that night when I watched that uh, on YouTube, I saw that same anointing on our pastor. What a commitment. And I'd like to ask you, if you think about it, 40 years as a pastor of one church. And many pastors been the pastor of one church for 40 years. Now, I have my wife here who's going to help me with this announcement. She says she don't talk, so I'm going to have her demonstrate all our commemorative journals that we have here as I tell you about those. First, she's going to show us our 25th journal. And any of you guys who's here for the 25th, raise your hand. Yeah, honey, can you show that? You know, just like uh, round one, two, and three of a sports event. You know, like move with it. Okay. That's the 25th. The reason I'm showing you all of these, then we have also the, the yellow one. The 35th. The 30th. I'm sorry. So 30th. This is the 30th commemorative journal. There's a reason I'm showing you all of these. And then finally, this beautiful 35th. Now, wouldn't you want to be in this journal this year? I'm going to tell you how you can participate. We'd like to have all of the ministries take out an ad in this book. It's $140 for a one-page ad. For a half-page, it's $75. For business cards, it's $25. You can do this also as a family. You can do this also as an individual. But each one of these journals, and I happen to have all four, uh, is a memorabilia, something that you'll be able to look back at. Also, it also serves as a business reference. You know, a lot of times we sit in church, we don't know who's doing something next to us. You might have a leak in your roof, and you didn't know you were sitting next to a roofer. You know, you might want to get a new hair do, and you don't know nobody that does hair. So all of that, we want to invite all businesses also to play a part in this. Thank you, sweetheart. You're so good. You want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> and we're going to have a fashion show. That's on the 20th. So you guys might need to take note because a lot of activities going on. The fashion show, I thought Miss Beasley would be here to talk about it. But yeah, I know a lot of you guys would love to be in the fashion show, particularly you young people. We need to know the new fashion that you guys are wearing as well. So you need to get with someone in our committee to let us know that you want to be a part of the fashion show. It's on April the 20th. Also, the deadline for submitting your ads is also April the 20th. Then on the 18th, we're going to have a masquerade banquet where you get to you know masquerade party, get to wear your mask and all your after five, all your nice apparel, all your tux, mosquitoes, and all of that, and all of that for that particular occasion. Uh, the assessments, assessments are $40 for members, 
$140 for all ministries. And then also, there's a gift level for the journal. The gift levels are $1,000 if you'd like to have a full page and two free tickets to the banquet. A half page is $750 with two tickets to the banquet. And a half page is $500 with two tickets to the banquet. And I think I about covered everything. I just want to say that uh, we'd like for everybody to participate. I think this is a wonderful time. 40 years, I know he's approaching 70 years old, and maybe he'll be around for that 45th. So God bless everybody. Thank you for your attention. Amen. Again, just happy to be a part of Holy Ghost Headquarter. But truly, the fire is coming through the bone. You know what I'm saying? You're just, just happy to be here once more and again. But I want to tell this, uh, I want to let y'all know about this quick uh, praise report I got here where we did some work on the parking lot outside, trying to help everybody, cars were coming in and out, and uh, we was able to do some work. Me and an amigo friend of mine by the name of Jeremy, we did it like two weeks ago, and uh, we start like 7 o'clock in the morning. Went up to uh, Lowe's up there to get the uh, 20, uh, 55 palletized bag of Sack Creek. And uh, uh, we started at 7 o'clock in the morning, just him and I. And those two, that one pallet only took about three parts of the biggest hole when you first come in. And we went back again, uh, probably around 12 o'clock, got another palletized uh, bag of Sack Creek bags weighing 60 pounds per bag. And we was uh, able to uh, fill most of the holes, but we still got more work to do. But uh, we, we just thank God we was able to do that. And uh, the thing about that, uh, that, that morning, we, we didn't really have nothing to eat. We didn't eat anything. We just started work. I didn't know it was going to take that long doing that. Because we had to clean the stuff out, clean the, everything out, and, and put a new foundation. Kind of like what we got to do in our lives, clean some trash out, you know, and uh, call on Jesus to help us along the way. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but the thing at the end, about 3 or 4 o'clock that evening, uh, deep. Come on, let me give you some flowers. I don't have the physical one, but I'm going to give you some flowers while you're here. He came around and seen what we was doing, and he uh, congratulated us. It looked pretty good. He, uh, he said, all right. He kept walking. I said, Deke, uh, uh, you, could you go get something to eat? He said, well, if you hadn't told me earlier, I would have went and got it. Yes. <laughs> so we started working and stuff, and he kept working. I said, I said, how about go to McDonald's up there and get us something to eat, uh, Deke? He said, I can do that. And so me and, me and Amigo went back to work and everything, doing what we was doing. Deep walk around looking at what we already did. He ain't went nowhere yet. So he walked around looking. So I ain't worried about it. He said he's going to get it. He's going to get it. But the Migo said, he said, hey, he's not going to get us no food. <laughs> I said, I don't know. He, he done walked out to the end of the parking lot. I said, let me go check. I said, let me go check. So I put my tools down and, and, and begin to, when I turned around, he had the McDonald's bag in his hand. I don't know how he did it. But what we did know, he had called somebody. And I want to just say thank you for being on time. With that food, but. but we got lots more work to do out there. Y'all bear with us, and hopefully we, we, we did some improvement for y'all cars. Thank you. Amen. Those are the results of a happy church church that is is busy it's full of life and full of love y'all don't believe that do you yeah. prophetess they don't know when to shout <laughs> we thank God for the deaconesses we thank God for our pastors aid committee and I did want to tell the committee, I talked to Gwen Jordan yesterday, and she says she's hoping to be here. She's been ill and been in and out of the hospital, and she says she's hoping to be here on the pastor's anniversary. So we would just want to keep praying for her strength, that God will make it so that she can come back. And she says she's, she doesn't live that far from here, but she does want to make her way back. We want to pray for everybody. We need to pray for each other. Don't just pray for this one group. Pray for everybody. Because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. 
The Emma Hansford Usher Board would like to have a quick meeting after church in the back of the church. The Silver Jubilee meeting that has been stated as on April 9th this Tuesday is on April 16th next Tuesday. The reason why that is, is we, those of us that want to go and support Mother Ann Mitchell, her sister Ruby Nell Johnson transitioned a few weeks ago and her home going is this Tuesday. The visitation hour is from at 11 o'clock and the services are at 12 at the um, Joseph, what is it? Lincoln Cemetery in the chapel. Any, anybody that would like to go and show their sign of support for the candy lady. Now all that, all that candy you done picked up, I know I've gotten it. But let's, if those of you that can and will go to support the family, be there at 11 o'clock on Tuesday for the viewing and the visitation hour and 12 o'clock for the home going service. Um, so we will have Silver Jubilee next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Also the security team, we wanna have a very quick meeting after service in Jackson Hall, very quick, maybe five or 10 minutes max. And those of you that can be there, please come. On next Sunday, the second Sunday, we will have baptism. Yeah. On next Sunday, we will have baptism. Did you all see how many people came down last Sunday? On Resurrection Sunday, God blessed us. There were those that came to turn their lives around. I should have heard an amen from everybody here. All of us were at that point at one time in our life. But we want to be here next Sunday at 930 to show our support for those that are coming to make that commitment. It's about commitment. Just as when you, you, you show your sign of commitment when you partake in the Lord's Supper. When you come to be baptized, you're burying the old self and bringing out the new. And we want, to, we want to be here to show our sign of support. And we also want to welcome all of our new members, those that joined last Sunday. Anybody that joined last Sunday, would you please stand? Please stand. Give them, give them a round of applause. Give them a, uh, come on now. Come on. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You heard about the fashion show also on the fourth Sunday. The Wellness and Grief Ministry will have their first annual Health and Wellness Expo. It's going to take place after service in the gym, and it would be a good idea for all, any or all of us to attend because a lot of us are going through things. We hide it. We mask it. And there has to be a way for you to deal with it. And if you don't know how to deal with it, that's a good start. Also on May 4th, a mother's love is eternal, a special Mother's Day luncheon given by the Moms Foundation will take place at the Prince Hall Lodge on Old National, beginning at 11 o'clock, lasting until 3. Please go and show your support. And this, this one is in, in loving memory of our mother, Mother Ethel Mae Copeland. Don't forget about Pilates and aerobics. 
every Saturday from 12 at 12:30 and then all of our new members we will be having new members class we're going to do it two Saturdays won't last you long but on the 4th of May and on the 11th of May we will have our new members class beginning at 9 o'clock and we want you to be here because you we want you to know how the body of Christ in the in the house of the Lord works what how and why we do things the way we do things so we want you to be informed we want you to be prepared and we'll, we're, it's not going to be long. We're going to make it fun, and it's going to be enjoyable. But we need you to know who, who we are and our history. Amen? Amen? There was a doctor, a lawyer, a little boy, and a priest. They were out on a flight one Sunday afternoon on a small private plane. Suddenly, while they were flying, the plane developed engine trouble. In spite of the best efforts of the pilot, the plane started to go down. And finally, the pilot grabbed a parachute. He yelled to the passengers that they better had jumped. And then he jumped out First, unfortunately, there were only three parachutes remaining. The doctor grabbed one and said, I'm a doctor. I save lives, so I must live. The lawyer then said, I'm a lawyer, and lawyers are the smartest people in the world. I deserve to live. He also grabbed a parachute and jumped. The priest looked at the little boy and said, my son, I've lived a long and full life. You are young and have your whole life ahead of you. You take the last parachute and live in peace. The little boy handed the parachute back to the priest and said, not to worry, Father. That smartest man in the world just took off with my backpack. It's time for the offering. Let us all stand. And we do want you to know if you are having trouble uh, putting your ties in online, get the Easy Tithe app and download it to your phone. And once you download it, then you'll be able to access First Iconium and give your tithes. That's what we're, what we're here. We bring all our tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in his house. Let us, let us recite all that I have. The Lord has provided as an act of faith and obedience to the word of God, I prayerfully and cheerfully give my tithes and receive my blessings from the Lord. All of those on the side aisles, please follow down past the wall. Those in the center, be led at the direction of the ushers.
that you've it put upon us. Father God, we just ask you to bless the suffering that's going on throughout the throughout this land. Yes. Bless the homeless that's got to sleep under the bridge. Yes, Lord. Father yes. God, touch our hearts that we can do a better job for anybody that we come in contact with. Father, just ask you to bless this offering and let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In your son, Jesus' yes. name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. The outreach ministry is also asked for volunteers on the third Sunday after church. They said more details later. Please see Renika Struther or any members of the outreach committee. All, anybody that would like to volunteer the third Sunday after church, you can get more details from Renika Struthers or any of the outreach committee members. It's April, that means uh, new month birthdays. Anybody in April this month? Oh, come on now. Oh, look at there. Don't sit down, don't sit down. Could we get any and all visitors to stand, please? Any and all visitors, please stand. All right, please continue to stand. Reverend James Rawls will come at this time and give us a welcome. Amen. To our visitors, we would like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We came to adore the swings on welcome hinges. 
but ask can you you to pray for us as we pray for you and continue to keep us in your prayers. Be seated. Amen. 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 On Friday, we had a service here for a young man named Jay. For 20, he was uh, 25 years old. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of us saw that on YouTube. Uh, I want to thank you, thank you to our security team. You all played a big, important role in that service on Friday. And I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Not every pastor can stand before his people and say, I'm a happy pastor. I thank God for the love that is continuously shown here at First Iconia. Don't have to ask people to love, to serve, to be in the community, to be engaged and involved. After you get to know Jesus, it just becomes natural. And I am ever, ever thankful and grateful to God for the love that you continue to show towards each other. And Mitchell, candy lady, as we know, she's here this morning. She lost her last sister. We're going to go out there Tuesday to be with her. But she's in the Lord's house. I don't know no better place when Mama Copeland passed that Sunday. Debbie Copeland and the family were right here in the church where there's love, support, prayers. Sometimes your prayer need legs, y'all. Not just words, but some legs. Sometimes your prayers need a pocketbook. I thank you so much for the love. I you know that we are a church that's very involved in the community, and we've had our visitors to stand. But I know that Tiffany is, is here. Uh, Tiffany, just stand up, Tiff, real quick, is running in Fulton County, but there, uh, for Superior Court Judge. I was called by somebody that I trust a lot. Well, that speaks well of you, Tiffany. Now, Mecca is in DeKalb County. I want to be clear on that. Mecca Anderson is uh, running for court. She's at DeKalb County. Tiffany is in Fulton. God bless you. Our prayers are with you. Thank you for worshiping with us. I don't know. Here's what I know about Reverend Mack. I don't run against nobody. I only run with my candidate. I, I, a lot of good folk offering themselves. I ain't against nobody. I just support who I support. Most times we win. <laughs> we got a candidate for sheriff. James J.T. Brown. But, but Brown still here. There you go, right there, running for sheriff. Fulton County. Bless your heart. Good Lord. But glad to have you with us. Anybody want to run for sheriff? Y'all need to be in church somewhere every Sunday. Just asking the folk to pray for y'all. All right, Mr. Brown, God bless you too. Yeah, bless you too. You know, it's good to have good candidates to offer themselves. And we, we thank God for, for them. I'm, I'm looking forward to next Sunday, this young man, Rod Vincent Jack, his mama sitting back there. The spirit ate on my heart a few Sundays ago saying, let him say a word. Let, let, let me show you what I'm doing in him. And through him, he 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 out there on the what that TikTok and what the other thing you on uh, Instagram, and folk learning about first Iconium. I ain't on TikTok, and I ain't on Instagram, but he got a big following too on, on Instagram. So we gonna get some of them Instagram folk. Hopefully, we will get some of that Instagram money. He's going to share the word with us. We've had so many young people who've joined. And uh, we've asked uh, TJ and Rondell and, and Corey, and it's four. Oh, Rod Vincent, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my daughter. <laughs> 
to, to help our age ministry, to help out our age ministry. Nikki and Erica and Tap, they've been doing a great job. Now. They've been carrying this thing for years. They started out in this church, and now they're providing the leadership for our young people, our children. And uh, we're going to build up a youth ministry team. And, and we're going to, amen, now that, there you go, a youth ministry team. And, and we're going to show other churches how to do it. And so I'm excited about what God is doing here at First Eye and what God is going to do on next Sunday. Prayer works. I've seen it. It's right here in our midst. I see prayer working every day. If you woke up this morning, prayer works. If you're able to put one foot in front of the other, prayer works. If you got a shelter over your head, prayer works. I'm going to be preaching about worship this morning, and I'm telling you, everybody ain't going to like what I have to say. I'll just give you a prelude so y'all can sit down and get ready with your pen and paper. There's a difference between religious worship and righteous worship. There's a difference between religious worship and righteous worship. Religious worship, we have to ask y'all to stand. Righteous worship, we ain't got to say nothing to you. When that Holy Spirit get on you, you just can't help yourself. I ain't going to preach it now. I just want to whet your appetite. Ain't nobody got to ask you to do nothing in righteous worship. I look around and I see those who've lost loved ones still standing. As evidence that prayer, prayer works. Some people were here Friday for Jay Jackson Jr.'s home going. It was the first time they ever been in church. There were some young people here. First time they ever I talked to some of them. Been in church. I want to thank Reverend Rawls and Sister Rawls for their leadership. The nephew of Pebbles Mitchell Shivers. She told me to make sure I said that. And Bartholomew, through marriage, his nephew. And that's what First Iconium does, what Tony was talking about. We reach out and make ourselves available to family. And it ain't about membership. Somebody need help, the Bible said. They hungry, feed them. They thirsty, give them water to drink. Don't just pray for them. That's what we do at first time. That's what we've been doing for 40 years. That's why we call ourselves the servant church. So we keep but the Jay's family and our prayers, Sister Ann Mitchell, Candace, we keep them and the family in our prayers. We haven't seen the Elder Sean Smith for a while. Most of that time, beloved, he's been in the hospital. For almost a month. Text this morning said I was trying my best to get there with him. But my body won't let me. Keep me lifted up. In prayer. Keep Elder Sean Smith in our prayer. Keep Sister Frances Walters. We had a chance to go and visit her in Charles a few days ago. She said, Rev, don't let them forget about me. She's going through chemo and hospital radiation. We got members 
people, 15, 20, 25 years cancer free. I'm going to keep Francis, C.C., and Charles lifted up in our prayers. Deborah Bozeman is going through her valley. She's out there with her daughter, who's also a doctor, Utah. She said, Lord, I miss first I come. I miss the fellowship. We lift up Deborah Bozeman in our prayers. Brother Derek Burden, Mama Burden, Margaret Bolger, Lena Gleaton, Thelma Weems, Johnny Palmer and his mom, especially his mother. We lift up in our prayers. Reverend Davenport, his family, he lost an aunt. We keep them in our prayers. Tamara Moore. Rosalind Baker texted me this morning, said she had all intentions of being here. But she found herself on the floor this morning and asking the church to pray with and for her. Mama White texted me and said, keep Lydia. She did the Hospital right now. She had a fall this morning. Lydia ain't even supposed to be here, y'all. Years ago, the doctors told her she had six months. Years ago. She's still here. You keep Mama White who's by herself right now. Lydia in our prayers and we want to keep Norbert Johnson prayed up all of those families who have lost loved ones the prayers of the righteous availeth much and I believe in prayer anybody else believe in prayer anybody else believe in prayer It works. It works. Prayer works. Choir's going to come now. Yesterday, not only did our deaconess meet, but our deacons also met. Deacon Chairman Sam Noel and I have been talking for several months. We've been praying over a vice chair, Deacon Murray. Yesterday, the deacon's ministry selected Kevin Lewis to serve as our vice chair. Stand up, Kevin. I want them to know you. Now, what y'all don't know is that brother is always out here helping folk. Always out here, particularly with our mothers, our elders, doing stuff that I didn't even know he was doing. Kevin Lewis. He's going to take us to the throne of grace this morning. Come on, choir. Good to see Desiree Gates back up in the choir too, amen.
won't you come this morning? The altar is open. Say yes. You got to say yes. Say yes. Yeah. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. Remember Sister Samuel. Her sister had to have a very serious surgery. Sarah. We lift her up in our prayers. We welcome our new vice chairman of our deacon ministry to come and lead us, Kevin Lewis, to the throne of grace. Thank you, Lord. 
Remember when I got set aside to, uh, to become a deacon? Uh, seemed like all my troubles and stuff just got worse. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had the prayer policy in effect uh, back then, and uh, every Wednesday I would meet up with Deacon Murray and tell him about my troubles. He would always look at me and smile and say, hang in there. Second Wednesday come, same thing, seemed like things got worse. Mm. Expecting Deacon Murray to give me a scripture or give me some direction and sat there and he listened to me, had a little smile on his face. When I got through, he said, hang in there. Yes, sir. Third time, I wasn't expecting him to say, hang in there. I'm like, this time you gotta give me something. And uh, told him my troubles and my woes and Things seem to have been worse from the first week. He looked at me and smiled, and I'm saying to myself, you better not say hang in there. <laughs> he said, hang in there. I said, man, look, I said, I came to you for about three weeks. You ain't showed me no scripture or anything. He said, let me tell you something. He said, you already said that the minute that you decided to become a deacon, your troubles got worse. He said, the devil has looked into your future. Yeah. And he's saying he's trying to derail you. That's right, that's right. Gave me a smile and said, hang in there. <laughs> I say that to say this to everybody that's going through something. Yeah. Hang in there. Hang in there. There's hope out there. And uh, stay prayed up. Let's go to God. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you yes, for this Lord. church, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Thank you for the leader of this flock, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask that you just continue to keep your arms around him, your angel, yes. for protection around him and his family, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask that you bless the deacons, Lord, and the service that we are here to provide. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask that you just keep us all yes. unified, keep us strong, Lord, and thank yes. you so much for not only our chairman, but our chairman emeritus, Lord, yes, Lord. who provides wisdom and guidance, Lord. Yes. We ask you, Lord, just to Bless those that are bereaved. Bless those that are sick. Yeah. Bless those that are going through, Lord. Yes. Show them a little light, Lord, so they can have some hope, Lord. Yeah. Yes. We ask that you just continue to be with us as we go through this walk of life. Yes. We ask that you just continue to allow us to be a beacon of hope right. yes. in this community, in this city, and in this state. Yes. And thank you so much for your love and your grace. Yes. We ask yes. that you continue to bless us with your love and yes. grace. Yes. In your son Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Jarvis. Thank all of our musicians over here. Deacon Don had to be out of town this morning and he wanted to make sure that I knew, but I'm kind of glad y'all named after me now. <laughs> Took a little growing. Timothy McDonald voices. John. Fourth chapter. 21st verse, that story where Jesus met that woman at the well. She was curious about worship. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in, neither in this mountain nor yet even at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what or who. We know what we worship. The salvation comes of the Jews. But Jesus said that the hour cometh, 
In fact, it's already here. When true worshipers, say true worshipers, and let that sink in now. Jesus said, he didn't just say worshipers. He said true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, say spirit, spirit. and in truth, say truth. The Father seeketh such type of people to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Coming to his disciples, and he finds them asleep. That's from last week. Said unto Peter, Why could you not watch with me for one hour? I want to talk this morning from the subject. True worship is the source of my power. And my servers. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, my desire is that you and I become true worshipers. You may be seated. My desire, my prayer is that you and I might become True worshipers. Easy Easter is pretty easy to preach. But what do you say after Easter? And I've been praying on this, and the Lord said the people need to know about true worship. After the resurrection. True worshipers is what God seeks after. The Lord laid it upon my heart to clarify some things. I have learned that there are a lot of misconceptions about worship. Some believe that just because they are coming to church, that they are worshiping. They have falsely equated being in the sanctuary with worship. Being in the sanctuary is not the same as being in worship. A lot of folks come to church for different reasons than to worship. I'm going to tell you that you could be in the sanctuary for three hours or more and still not worship. Never have experienced true worship. I want to say from the beginning, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. True worship is not about traditions and rituals. True worship is not about culture or personal expressions. Truth of the matter is true worship is not about me. True worship is not about you. True worship is about God. We have made worship about me. What I get out of worship. How it makes me feel. 
what it causes me to think. But true worship is not about me. And it's not about you. There are two types of worship. Religious worship and righteous worship. Well, the Lord whooped me up on this. Because all my life I've been taught that what I was doing was pretty good. That's what I've been taught. That's tradition. That was cultural. God said, now, I want you to set the record straight. It's not about religious worship. It is about righteous worship. Most churches today engage in religious worship, not righteous worship. Righteous worship is about God. Religious worship focuses on me. How the music make me feel. How the prayer makes me feel. How the pastor or whoever is presiding, whether he's saying the right thing or whether he's talking too much. I, I didn't hear y'all. We make it about me, whether we're going to be there two hours a day or whether we're going to be there three hours. I didn't go to bed at 11 o'clock last night because I was watching the final four. However long it was going to take, Reverend Yates, I was going to watch it. Purdue. I was watching them. Alabama, I was watching. I was sleepy too. I was long ready to go to bed, y'all. But I watched that game and I watched Caitlin Carter. That's just a bad y'all. She got it going on. I didn't care how long. They were behind one time, 12 points. Yeah, I was watching. Came back. Them three-pointers. I used to be able to do that. Millions of people watched. A lot of folk who come to church watch. We spoke about them spectators the last Sunday. Anticipated him. But the Jennings told me there's another one, Reb. Imitators. I said, yeah, I kind of miss them, but we got them too. Spectators. Anticipators. Imitators. And emancipators. How do I respond to God's good news? God's grace shown towards me. How much of myself am I giving back to God? Worship is the oldest practice in the history of humankind. Ever since there have been human gatherings, there have been aspects of worship. They used to worship the sun. They worship the moon. They worship stars. They worship the earth. They worship animals. Man has always worshipped. He worshipped because he felt that there was something bigger than me. Something more powerful than I am. Something supernatural. I did not create myself. Some of y'all think y'all did, but you did not wake yourself up this morning. You did not give 
yourself a reasonable portion of health and strength. God did that. And the reason God expects us to be engaged in true worship is because when you think about how good God has been to you, when you think about how God brought you through dangers seen and dangers unseen, how God opened doors for you, how God made ways for you, you ought to be running to the church house. You ought to be running to praise him, to thank him, to magnify his name. Nobody should have to beg you to stand up. That's religious worship. When I think about beloved, I think about it every day. How good God been to me. Do you ever really think about how good God been to you? Yeah. How God put a shelter over your head. How God put clothes on your back. How God allows you to see. How God allows you to hear. How God allows you to speak, to walk. God did all of that. The object of our praise and the focus of our praise should be always on God. And at some point, beloved, everybody ain't got to shout. I ain't never believed that. But at some point, something going to hit you. If you think about God, something going to move you. If you think about the goodness of the Lord, something going to get inside of a Jeremiah and say, it's like fire. Shut up in my bone. You ain't got to do it every Sunday, but every now and then, you got to get up from that seat. You got to wave holy hands. You got to say, thank you, Jesus, for how you brought me, how you taught me, how you provided for me. You got to wave a a finger. You got to walk out. You got to run around the church. Sank, you got to do something. If you sit there, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Never say a mumbling word. I stop by to tell you, you got religious worship. Not righteous worship. But the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because if you don't praise him, the rocks are going to praise him. We don't want a church full of religious worshipers, of rocks. We want a church full of righteous, true worshipers who worship the Father, must worship him in spirit and in truth. This woman in the fourth chapter of John, Jesus met her at the well. Wasn't even supposed to be talking to a woman in public. She wasn't just any woman. She was a Samaritan. She was a half-breed. She had married outside of the Jewish clan. She was despised and rejected. But when she was in the presence of Jesus, something moved on the altar of her heart. True worship is an encounter 
with the living God, experiencing God and praising God and making an offering of yourself to God, scribing true value and worth, not to myself, but to God, who is the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end of our faith. True worship is not about me. True worship is not about you. True worship is about God. True worship is a response to God's goodness, God's grace, and God's mercy. That's why we give him praise, because God's been good to you. Has God ever been good to you? Can I get a witness? Has God been good to you? Yeah, if God been good to you, you ought to worship him. You ought to praise him. You ought to magnify his name. You ought to lift him up. And I believe, beloved, with my sanctified mind that God been good to each and every one of us by the mere fact that we are here this morning is a testimony of the goodness of the Lord. We could have been dead and in our grave. We could have been on some cooling board. But God touched you. God touched us. God gave us a mind to come to his house. One more time. Now you can sit there and look at the preacher all you want. Sit there and wait on the choir to make you shout all you want. Sit there and wait on the preacher to pray a prayer, make the hair stand up on the back of your neck if you want. But I come to praise him. I started praising him before I got here. I came to worship him. I didn't have to be in his house to worship him. I'd be driving on the highway and I'd be praising the Lord. I'd be sitting in my living room and I'd be praising the Lord. I'd be on my job and I'd be praising the Lord. Oh, when I think about the goodness. We need to express our devotion and our love to God. Ascribe to true value, true worth to what God is doing in your life. True worship is a response to God's grace, God's mercy. True worship is not just private. True worship is communal. It didn't say God likes when his people, not his person. God loves it when his people get together. God likes it when a little more than two or three are gathered together in his name. Now, you can periodically worship in private, but never confuse the exception with the norm. The norm of God's worship, God's praise, God's adoration is communal. Community, that's why they build temples. That's why they build sanctuaries. That's why they build synagogues, churches. Because God loves for his people to assemble together. You can't get the same spiritual feeling by yourself. I ain't going to say you can't feel nothing, but it ain't the same. When that choir starts singing like they were singing up in here, and you feel it on that row, in the back row, in the middle section, and over there and in the balcony, you start feeling the Holy Spirit moving. After a while, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. You hang around it long enough, some of it going to jump off on you. True worship. Worship means, and I'm going to move on, to give honor, homage, reverence, respect, adoration, praise, glory to a superior being. God demands worship. God demands, not an option, y'all. God demands praise. 
God expects us to recognize that he is God. And besides him, there is no other. He said, I am a jealous God. And thou shalt have no other God before me. We need to recognize God's holiness, God's sovereignty, God's power. COVID calls us to worship a little different. Wanda mentioned that this morning. But we need to make sure that we are not confusing religious worship with righteous worship. I'm glad we got Facebook. I'm glad we got YouTube. For those who are disabled, for those who can't make it, for those who are in other places, other cities, other states. But beloved, Facebook, I love you. YouTube, I love you. But y'all need to get up on Sunday morning. Put on your clothes. Get in your car. And drive that body that God gave you to make the money that you make to put a shelter over your head and drive that body to somebody's church house. Don't just listen to the choir, join the choir. Don't just watch the ushers, join the ushers. Don't just be a spectator but be a participator. Don't confuse religious worship. I did it two and a half years. I had to preach from my basement, and I did what I had to do. I did it, and I did not miss a Sunday. Bible study, we ain't never, to this day, missed a Sunday through COVID. But I'm here to tell you, it ain't the same. I do what I had to do. I did what I had to do. But it's a whole lot better when I can stand up here and look at y'all. Now, some of y'all, I look over y'all. Because I see that religious worship on you and not that righteous I want to share four things real quick, and I'm going to be through. Four. I'm going to make them short, though. True worship, number one, will expose false worship. True worship will expose false worship. Number two, true worship will cost you something. It ain't free. True worship will cost you something. Number three, true worship is not just an experience, but a way of life. True worship is a way of life. And number four, true worship will change the atmosphere and you. True worship, number one will expose false worship. Biblical worship is offering completely to God. It is submitting completely to God. Worship involves all that you are, your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. We seek to worship with our whole being. You can't just worship God with your eyes. You can't just sit there and look at other folk. Hmm. You can't just worship God with your heart. Talk about I feel this way. It's just the way I is. It's just the way I feel. That's all right to a certain extent. But when you worship Righteously, you worship God with your whole being. Your whole being. 
You ain't got to do it every Sunday. But every now and then, you got to move. Every now and then, you got to get up from that seat. Every now and then, like, like his mother used to do, watch her. She hold up a finger and she hurry out that door right there. I seen me this king as dignified as she was. One Sunday I was preaching at Ebenezer and the Holy Spirit got her. That opera singing. Mrs. Coretta Scott King, that wife of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., that epitome of womanhood. One Sunday, she started thinking about the goodness of Jesus. She started thinking about what God had brought her through. I know because she talked to me afterwards. She started thinking about how God had provided for her and how God had made way. And, and, and she just jumped up. And she screamed. She hollered. And she said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It'll expose false worship. Folk who come to see who came, who with who, who's sitting with who, who no longer with who. Don't y'all think Reb don't be knowing what be going on? Reb, no. You don't tell me the Holy Ghost going to tell me. True worship will expose false worship. Let your praise be for real. You don't shout because somebody else shouting. You don't sit around waiting on somebody else to break the ice. You shout because God touched you. That song says, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. All I know is something happened, and now I know. He touched me, and I'm no longer the same. True worship will expose false worship. True worship, number two, will cost you something. The main thing it's going to cost you is your pride. The main thing, because you said that, it's going to cost you is your pride. Too many of us worried about what other folk going to say about you. What other folk going to think about you. How other folks view you when you're getting your praise home. That's why I love the happy preacher. Happy preacher ain't care about what none of us thought about him. Too many of us are too proud to praise the Lord. You got too much edumacation. You got too much sophistication that you can't be doing all of that and carrying on like that. It's going to cost you something. In order to have true worship, you must lose yourself. Some of y'all in love with yourself. And you cannot see yourself losing yourself. Because true worship will make you lose your mind. True worship will make you lose your pride. True worship will make you give away your dignity. True worship sometimes will make you get ugly. All your makeup get messed up. True worship might make you shake your wig off. True worship.
Forget about your eyelashes. True worship don't care about a run in your stocking. I got two more. I'm almost there. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I know where my power come from. I'm talking about my spiritual power. I know where my call to service comes from. I'm talking about my spiritual calling. We put too much emphasis on other people rather than on God. I'm not looking for man to approve of my worship. I'm not looking for man to lift up how I worship. I look to the hills from which cometh my help and know that my help coming from the Lord. I want God to approve. I want God to smile. I want God to say, well done. I love all of y'all, but y'all can't get me into heaven. I can't get you into heaven. God and God alone can do that. I got two more. I'm ready. True worship will expose false worship. True worship will cost you something. It's God-centered, not self-centered. Praise and worship towards God cannot come from a polluted heart. If your heart ain't right, you can't have true worship. If you got hate in your heart, you can't have true worship. We're getting ready for communion. If you got ill will against your neighbor, you cannot have true worship. You cannot experience true worship. If you got grudges and covetousness in your heart, you cannot experience true worship. You got to rid yourself of those things that hold you back. Those things that weigh you down. Thirdly, true worship is a way of life, not just an experience. Anybody who thinks that the only time to worship is on Sunday, you have been misinformed. If the only place you can worship God is at 542 Moreland Avenue, you in trouble. If the only time you can get your praise on is at Moreland and Glenwood, you in serious trouble. True worship is not about a location. It's not about Sunday morning. It's a way of life. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth on Monday. That's why I like when Jarvis get caught up. I, I tell folk, I don't mess with Jarvis in the music. I shorten what I got to say so that the music can speak, so that the keyboards can speak, so that Jarvis can sing. Because I tell you now, Y'all got to know his story. And what he's even having to go through right now. If you don't know my story, don't you ever judge me. Hey! If you have not walked in my shoes, if you have not been where I have been, if you've not been through what I have been through, don't you open your doggone mouth. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for holding me right there. True worship is an everyday thing. When I wake up in the morning, my wife laugh at me sometimes. 
She told me just this morning, she said, I like it when before you go to bed, you say, good night, Jesus. I do. I say, good night, Jesus. And when I wake up in the morning, guess what? I say, good morning, Jesus. I want to thank you for watching over me last night. I want to thank you for touching me with your finger of love. I want to thank you for looking after me. Because somebody that went to sleep last night, they didn't wake up this morning. Somebody that bed they slept in became their cooling board. I'm glad. I'm so glad this morning that he looked beyond all of my faults and he saw my needs. I thank the Lord that I can praise him every day. I praise him when I'm happy. I praise him when I'm sad. I praise him when I got money and I praise him when I don't have a dime. I praise the Lord when my body is well and I still praise the Lord when I'm lying flat on my back. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. I'm wondering right about now, are there any true worshipers in the house? Are there any true worshipers in First Iconium? Has God ever done anything for you? Has God ever touched your body with this finger of love? The last thing about true worship, it will change the whole atmosphere. I see you standing up on your feet now because you're thinking about how good God been to you. How has anybody here can be a living witness how good God been to you? I want you to turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, God has been good to me. He brought me through the storm. He brought me through the rain. He brought me through darkness. He brought me through all my pain. He's good. He's good. Tell somebody, God is good. God is good. He'll heal you. He'll change your atmosphere. He'll change your heart. He'll change your mind. He'll change your circumstance. He'll change your condition. We need some true worshipers. True worshipers. Mothers, are you true worshipers? Deacons, are you true worshipers? Deaconess, are you true worshipers? Choir, are you true worshipers? Tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus, about Jesus, how he suffered, how he was crucified, how he was died, how he laid in a tomb, but early Sunday morning, he got up, he got up, all power, all power in his hands, in his hands, worship. True worship, righteous worship, not religious worship. Righteous worship is what God expects from us. I'm going to open the doors of the church. Won't open the doors. Somebody here. Who the Lord is touching right now. Somebody here who the Lord has opened doors for. Somebody here 
who the Lord has to remind you that he loves you, that he cares for you. How did I make it? How did you make it? How did we make it? It was God's grace. My brother, my sister, if you're here today, I invite you to come. How did I make it all of these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valley, over the hill, I know it had to be God. How did I make it? Through the storm, how did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. For so many times when old man death, old man death, he tried to hold me down. But the reason I'm here, the reason I'm here today, it's all because of God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. worship but righteous worship
scripture say they worship me with their lips, but not with their hearts. We don't want to be like that. We want to worship God with our whole being. Your whole self. Let us hear just about. Reverend McDonald and First Iconium family, we have come to us this morning a mother and daughter. Her name is Victoria Jones. James, I'm sorry. And Maya James, she's the mother and her daughter. The daughter is the candidate for Bell. Oh, Bill Bill James. James. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mia, come on, baby, come on. The daughter is a candidate for baptism. Whoop, next Sunday. And the mother is full membership. Bless you. Bless you. Oh, we're going to baptize her too. Red Mac like to dip them now. He can do it. Don't we dip them, Doug? We're done. Yes, sir, we're dipping. Go ahead, Doc. We also have coming this morning on the full membership, born in the month of April. His name is John Anderson, Jr. Brother John! Now, he's been coming for quite a while. And he talked to me, and he talked back to me. He one of them, you know, I could say, you know, got that righteous prayer. Amen. He talked back to the preacher. Deacons, talk back to the preacher. It's, a, it's not a monologue. It's a call and response. And Brother John come up and shake my hand almost every Sunday. He said, the Lord been speaking to me. I said, I know it because he been speaking to me too. I said, and when the Lord is ready, you will come forward. And look at what the Lord has done. Already working. I tell folks. See, at first I call him, you ain't got to be no member to work. Already last year. Show me membership in the Bible. It ain't in there, y'all. Discipleship is. Show me a disciple, a worker, a doer. I like members. I can depend on members. But that ain't in the Bible. Before you ever become a member, make sure you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. As a sign that we welcome these three, mother, daughter, brother John. He got that good name, too. When Jesus was on the cross, he looked down at John, and he told John, take care of my mama. They were close. As a sign and seal that we receive these three who have now come. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. And I don't give a hoot about him. Shake your hand again, Brother John. Daughter, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, bless you. Welcome. At the end of the service, right up the stairs in the library, you need to get a photograph and a little bit more information from you. You may return to your seats. Thank you so much. All right, Minister Deacon, let's get ready for communion. Yeah, buddy. Jesus told his disciples that Thursday evening, do this in remembrance of me. True worship, not religious worship, but righteous worship. God-centered worship. Jesus told them this will be the last time that I'll be able to sup with you on this side. They gathered in that upper room and he said, before you eat, before you drink, 
Pray. Pray that God will remove anything that causes us to be separated from God. Any hatred, any jealousies, any covetousness, any ill will against a brother or sister can never see righteous worship. Ask God to create in you a clean heart and to renew the right spirit within you. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for what our hearts have felt here today, for what our ears have heard, for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for Easter, Resurrection Sunday that binds us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, Lord, search our hearts as we prepare to partake of your body and your blood. And, Lord, if you find anything that's not pleasing in your sight, take it out of us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, put love in our hearts, O oh God, forgiveness in our hearts, patience and understanding in our hearts that we might become one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you right now for all that you endured, for all that you went through so that we would have a right to the tree of life. This is our prayer. In your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. The blood. The blood. Servants, feed the sheep, feed the lamb.
That night, Thursday, when Jesus gathered in that upper room with his disciples, he looked around, saw Peter. He already knew what Peter was going to do, deny him three times. But he said, Peter, I love you. He looked at Thomas. He already knew what Thomas was going to do. Doubt him. Say, unless I put my finger in the nail print. He said, Thomas, I love you. He even looked at Judas, who he knew was going to betray him with a kiss. He said, Judas, I love you. Then he looked at you. And he looked at me. And he reminded us once again how much he loves you. He took bread. He said, this represents my body. That's going to be broken. Bruised. For you. So that you might have a right to the tree of life, to eternal life. He lifted it up 
to his heavenly father. He broke it. He says, it's broken for you. Take you now, my beloved. Eat all of it. Then he took that cup. If this represents my blood, they think they're going to take my life. But they don't know. I give it for you. They think they're burying me. What they don't know is they're planting a seed that will grow all over the world. He took that cup. He lifted it up to his heavenly father. He gave thanks. And now, my beloved, drink you all of it. This is the dressing up room down here. You got to get to heaven. Nah. This is the dressing up room down Yeah. Yeah. This is the dressing up room down here. You got to get to heaven. You got to love everybody. Yeah, yeah. You got to love everybody. Whoa, oh, you got to get to heaven. A chart to keep our hand. I got a God to glorify. Who gave it? Son, my soul to say that did it for the sky. You got to love everybody. Yeah, yeah. You got to love everybody. Oh, you got to get to heaven. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Say a red like me. I once was lost, but now I found a life for now. I see this is the dressing up room. Yeah, yeah. This is the dressing up room. You got to get to heaven. Give the Lord one more hand clap for praise. True worshipers. What a time, what a time, what a time. I wasn't talking about nobody. Just talking about what I'm talking about. I want to thank you for being here today. God wanted you to be here today. Baptism is next Sunday. We're going to have a time, what a time, what a time. I want to thank this great choir, Timothy McDonald Voices, all of our musicians. Again, Deacon Don had to be out of town this morning. Our ministers, our deacons, our deaconess, our mothers, all of you, our ushers and greeters, audio, video ministry, security ministry. I just thank God. Universe Soul is going to be over in Gwinnett County, and we usually take our young people. April the 27th, 12 o'clock, we're going to be uh, taking a group up to Universe Soul Circus. Tickets are $24.50. Every time we go, there's some adults who want to sponsor some of our young people. All of them don't have money. All their parents don't have money. So if you're interested, see Katrina Davenport, Hobson Davenport, uh, or any member of our uh, age ministry, they'll be more than happy to help and assist you. That's on April the 27th at uh, 12 o'clock. They're going to be going to Universe Soul. Next Sunday, we'll be baptizing at 9.30. Y'all, I had to order 12 more baptismal robes. I don't care if I got to order 12 more. The devil is having a hissy fit right about now. When he looks at what's happening at first side corner, he just had temper tantrums. 
I want us to make sure we give him one every single day. Every day make him have a tantrum. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Church motto, I can do all things through Christ. Turn to your neighbor. Say to your neighbor, you can do all things through Christ. Reach toward heaven. Let's stay together. We can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens us. Go in peace. May the God of peace go with you. God bless you. Don't forget those meetings after church.